welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanna talk about the top five most important things that I wish I knew um, before my first ever triathlon race. This is something that I wish that I had watched something similar to um, before my first race, just so that I could get fully prepared. Um, I guess nothing can really prepare you for, yeah, what to expect before going into a race. But yeah, let's just get into it. First thing that um, I kind of wanted to touch on was make sure that you know where the transitions are. Um, in my first race, I had a bit of a hiccup. You get a full email telling you about the race debrief, everything on there, so where transitions are, things like that. Obviously, I read that, um, but getting there, um, you still need to obviously figure where things figure out where things are, things like that. I didn't realise that there was two separate transition places. Um, I think the second race that I did, there was actually just one. So races differ. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look and see where transitions are. If there's a separate one for bike and run as well. I had to get Jake to <laughs> give me my shoes while I was on just coming off the bike. So yeah, that was far from ideal, but I'll, I'll know for next time it's one of those things so yeah just definitely take a, take that time before you race get there a little bit earlier and just take a look at the course as much as possible luckily the event organizers were understanding i was just said to them look it's my first time i had no idea and um, so yeah i was quite lucky in that aspect that i was able to get my running shoes because jake wasn't actually allowed inside the transition um, so you have to get in with a pass and also show your race number. Um, so yeah, Jake was just standing on the sidelines and yeah, had to pass me my trainers. And I'm grateful that the organiser let me do that because otherwise I would have been running with just barefoot essentially. So that wouldn't have been good. Number two, be prepared to get kicked in the face. I mean this as literal as, as it is. The swim is pretty chaotic. So my first one was a sprint. So it's obviously in a pool. Um, you need to be able to obviously count your own laps. Um, so I think the one that I did was 500 meters. No one's gonna be doing that for you. You literally have to be there on the second of your start time. Uh, well, if not before, but the pool is just chaotic. I've never been any in anything like it before. Obviously I've done my training all in a normal swimming pool, but um, I've had the luxury of having a lane to myself, not, you know, 20, 30 other people at the same time. Um, so yeah, just mentally prepare yourself for that. For the swim, that was my, or it still is, my least favoured part of the sport. Um, so yeah, it was pretty chaotic. I would probably say to just go a little bit faster than what you potentially would swim, just so that you're with faster people as well. Um, I think I put myself down, um, didn't have enough confidence in my swim that I was with people who were a little bit slower than me. So once you've done it, then it's fine afterwards. So yeah, don't worry too much. Number three is I would say to get elastic laces. Um, I'll show you the ones and put a link in the description of the ones that I use. Um, they're just from Amazon, so nothing crazy. Um, they're super simple to use and they come with a, a pack. Once I changed from laces to doing these, my transition time in the run was just so much quicker. Um, they're really comfortable to run with as well, like your foot's not gonna fall out. I don't train in them, just only for racing. I definitely, definitely would recommend those. Number four, I would say to 100% get a tri suit. For my first race, obviously I didn't have one. I just, yeah, obviously wanted to see if I would enjoy it before kind of buying one specifically for it. Um, so I did the swim just in like a normal swimming costume. And then once I got out, um, I put on running shorts and then a cycling jersey over top, which was really slow and difficult to get on when you're wet. You don't want to just stand there and like towel dry yourself because it is really frantic. You want to get away as soon as possible. The cycling jersey I'd like zipped up a little bit to then just be able to like get over on my head and then just be able to zip it with the rest of the way. So the, faffing with the zip. Yeah, I didn't really think about the number being already pinned on. So yeah, that that was just a nightmare. But um, I'd really, really recommend getting a, a tri suit. I'll also link the one that I've got um, down below. It's a DHB one, but it's, it's really, really good to be fair. Um, 
it, I think I paid maybe 30 or 40 quid for it. Um, so it's nothing, nothing crazy expensive. And I definitely didn't want to, you know, splash out the cash for just my second triathlon race. Um, but yeah, this one's, this one's done really well. So obviously you do the swim in it. All you need to then worry about is just getting your shoes on. Um, also what I did, this was actually a tip from Jake. He put talcum powder in my socks before um, I got on the bike. So straight out from the pool, put the socks on and it was, it was really easy to get on. I'm not yet ready yet to do the bike and the run with no socks on. I don't think, <laughs> no, I just can't, can't be doing that. Yeah, the tri suit really helps to shave off a few seconds in transition. Definitely, definitely recommend that. Number five, last one, 100% practice your mounts and dismounts for the bike. For some reason, um, I had it in my mind that I was too scared to do the dismount on my first one. And I think it's literally just because I didn't have SPD cleats on, which, yeah, is daft. Literally, once I kind of got that out of my head, I was just being ridiculous. It was just so much quicker. Um, you don't have to faff, you know, getting your leg off and you can just do it all swiftly um, and just get straight to that mindset of getting ready for the run. So if you can do um, like a flying mount as well, that'll be a lot easier. Um, I think what I'm going to do next is to get a pair of tri shoes and also for like bigger races that I've got coming up is to start tying them with elastics. Um, pretty sure that that's what the pros do, just so that the shoes are already on there and you can just basically, you don't have to worry about putting your shoes on, on the ground, which is obviously what I was doing. Um, so I'm still using my road shoes, so they would be difficult to get on whilst on the bike. That's kind of like my, my next step into making a, a faster transition. Um, but yeah, if you can you know, practice those, it would really, really help. Um, with the mount, I would just say literally just commit to it. Yeah, just got to get your leg over and that's it basically. Um, it will take a few times to get it right, um, especially after, I think, after um, a swim as well, your legs will probably feel a little, a little bit like jelly, but um, so yeah, mine definitely wasn't as smooth as what it used to be when I used to race cyclocross, but um, yeah, it all just comes down to practice, isn't it? So just stick at it. That's kind of my top five of what I would have done different from what I know now compared to what I knew when I first started. Um, I hope this helps. If you do have any other tips, just drop them in the comments because yeah, I'm still learning as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye.